Hi, everybody. It's Ray, otherwise known as Life and Vibe. And we have reached day six of the challenge. And I am on video 21 of Tim's week. And all I have to say, I'm kind of appreciating his friend John <laughs> because it's meant uh, Tim has been occupied with a friend and not posting as much content. Uh, and so I know there is one coming up with him and John together, uh, but I did hear that our friend Tim may need some uh, support today. Um, I've been told a little bit about he was getting a little teary-eyed. Um, so just just be aware that this could be an emotional ride. Um, and if you do feel that that's going to be too much for you, you know, you can always click away. <laughs> I always want to say protect your mental health, which is true. I always do say that. But yeah, T Tim is... Tim is it really uh, working his way back to Florida and to a visit to the villages, I think. I think he's trying to dream about parking his RV in uh, John's driveway at the villages. Uh, can you imagine Tim at the villages? That place is wild. Mm -mm -mm. He would have a he would love to be in the villages. I'm surprised he hasn't tried to get Tammy to get a place in the villages. All right, guys. Well, let me just put out my fair use disclaimers. Um, because obviously we are going to take a quick, well, not quick look. I am going to speed Tim probably up to 1.25, not as fast as the golf game. Um, but you know, I'm going to transform his material and this is entertainment. And I always want to remind people that, and I do put out a disclaimer. Obviously I am a registered nurse. I am trained to be a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. I do always want to come with people like Tim with some form of uh, compassion, but obviously I do look at things such as cults of personality and problematic behavior on the internet, but I do always want to say I'm not treating or diagnosing Tim at all. Um, I just kind of become fascinated, especially uh, with charisma and how it's used. And so people are always confused as to what's the point of my channel? Well, I'm somebody who studies psychiatry. <laughs> <laughs> and there is not a better place to watch the human mind in action than watching people in their YouTube channels post videos. And a lot of times it's them freestyle speaking, such as Tim does. And uh, he does not come out with his morning chat with a prepared plan. I feel like he just pops on the camera and he just starts to speak whatever is happens to be on his mind. So it's not like, okay, today um, I want to cover these specific topics. I think he has his greatest hits things that he hits. Um, but otherwise, he's very, uh, very much um, just uh, using it as an opportunity to kind of engage with people. I'm sorry, I'm sort of thinking, I'm thinking in back of my mind because I, I want to word this properly, but what I'm sort of uh, seeing when I watched him is somebody who's, you know, very open and he is kind of getting his audience into his world. And the difficulty is though, is that Tim does try to uh, moderate the content that his followers would be watching. And he's kind of, you know, trying to get this cult almost, if for lack of a better word, of people that will kind of listen to Tim. And he deletes comments. I have comments telling me up my hair is terrible, my accent, you name it. <laughs> people say I'm deleting comments when I'm not. Anyway, then what I deleted was one when somebody literally threatened me. <laughs> that was it. And I reported that. Okay. Let's just get over to morning chat because <laughs> I'm on a tangent. I was out on Paw Patrol earlier with Junebug and we had to go report something to the police station. <laughs> so that's why I'm a little late. It's always something. But uh, they need to be monitoring a park of ours a little bit better. And we came up with a great plan that maybe, since it's a mountain bike trail, that maybe having our police who have, you know, our bike police maybe should be the ones to patrol there every so often. And they probably would like that because it's really nice back there and get them out of the sun <laughs> at this time of year. So the bike police actually might enjoy that because <laughs> it's all like professionally graded mountain bike trails. So anyway, enough of that. 
Okay, let me get started. This was too long of a start, but it's the first of day six, and then obviously the the rest of them. I'm not so chatty. All right, Tim, I hear you cry. I've got tissues. Okay. Hey, good morning, everybody. Sarasota Tim, coming to you from my camper. <laughs> anyway, um, I am half looking asleep. I got a shower. I prettied up. I got cologne on. I put a new shirt on, and it still ain't working. My eyes are still half dead. Hmm. I'm exhausted from the heat, from golf, and everything else. But um, first thing I want to say. And I wish I had remembered the name of the person who made this comment. And I, if, I'm if i sorry I can't. Sorry, Tim called me mid-peanut. You know how I am about peanuts? I'm in Virginia. What can I say? We love our little peanuts. They take a very small amount. It's portioned. Anyway, um, <laughs> Tim was out at that golf course he's mentioned that john's older than he is and then he mentioned he did 18 rounds of golf or sorry 18 holes sorry one round 18 holes ah uh because some people go two rounds i'm not joking if they if they play well enough they can go two pretty fast so they've done like 36 holes anyway so somebody brought up the point that this gentleman john who's from florida obviously he's used to the heat but Tim's taking him out on the golf course for an extended period of time in the heat. And he's like, I, and it's just, you know, it's like, are you not concerned that one of you may get a heat stroke? <laughs> I just, he's so, I don't mean to laugh, but it's just, it's just like, I, I don't want to stop but him from activity, but that's why these folks play earlier in the day is because they don't want to get a heat stroke, potentially. It's just not worth it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but I just find it interesting that he doesn't think of it. And, you know, John is obviously a very nice man, and uh, Tim is taking advantage of that. But, Tim, think about it. If you feel groggy because you've been out in all that sun, you might have gotten a sunstroke. Like, too much heat, it's not... It's, you, <laughs> I promise you, it will do. A, it will do a number on you more than you realize. First thing, out of the box, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Yesterday, Jay, not John, Jay was was with me golfing. I don't know. I don't know. Jay, John, Jimmy. I got so many people. Last night when we came back from dinner, uh, we went to dinner at the uh, Riverside across the street. Jay and Bev and I. And uh, Kaylee, their dog, they got a little Yorkie they carry in a purse. And there's little, these little buttonholes. And Kaylee sticks his, her nose. Okay. Dog doesn't want anything to do with you. Uh, <laughs> allegedly. I think Bev does not want to be on camera. And good for you, Bev. Because it's meant less content. Because maybe that's part of the deal for you to go to dinner. Because we haven't seen any of this. And so I guess last night you are probably out to dinner. I hope you paid. I hope I hope I hear, Tim, that you paid for dinner. The least you can do for all the monetization and probably YouTube premium or whatever that you get because of they're watching your channel. Probably both are subscribed. So you can probably get two subscribers from one couple. I want to check out this conspiracy theory because each of them has their own YouTube channel. I mean, like, membership to the platform. Hmm, it's conspiracy theories here. No. Anyway, carry on. Goes up in these little buttonholes, and they say it's like whack-a-mole, whack because the dog will put his nose up, they poke it. And anyway, Kaylee goes with them everywhere. Oh. They love that dog, as most people do when they have a dog, especially <laughs> little lap dogs like that. I told uh, Miss T about it. Miss T's never met a dog she didn't like, <clears throat> but especially those Yorkies. That's her favorite. Oh. But anyway, my apologies uh, for calling <laughs> Jay John all day. He didn't say anything. He don't care, I guess. Maybe he didn't notice it. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. So his name is Jay? And you call him John? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't I I I just I don't even know what to say. Other than obviously. He's a nice person for not having corrected you. <laughs> I know that people in our generation are a lot more forward and will just correct you if you're incorrect with their name. 
and they're not shy to do it, and they shouldn't be. <laughs> I'd rather be corrected than continue ridiculously calling people by a different name. And I'm sure we've all made that mistake. <laughs> oh my God. But ours aren't filmed on video and posted to a YouTube channel where you already looked like a little bit of a bully and a control freak yesterday. <sighs> Jay, not John. Okay. All right. Oh, this guy gave you a shirt. I hope you, I definitely hope you bought him dinner after that mistake. Uh, now you're telling. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, if I, oh, anyway, oh God, it's early, early in the morning. And um, I had a rough day on the golf course yesterday. <clears throat> I'm having a rough time in comments from people that golf that are telling me I'm coming out of my shoes. Uh, Johnny Vegas tells me that. And I had this bad habit. I'm an amateur golfer. And when I swing the club, to me, the harder you swing, the further it'll go, right? Makes sense. That is not the way golf works. Golf is a game of opposites. Whatever feels right is wrong. And um, how you hold it, how you swing it, how you stand, everything. It's not baseball. So while I've played most of my life, and while I've been a hacker for the vast majority of my life, I did start making some changes that made me um, a good amateur. And I've been playing so much of it lately, and I've been watching these tutorials on YouTube <clears throat> Johnny Vegas also shared this one channel with me. And that's the mistake. You start watching these guys and are like, hey, you do this, you do that, and all this, and you get out there on the golf course. That's why it's good to get somebody who's actually a pro, at least to go and get a few lessons so they can tell you how to correct yourself. It's that simple. Even your buddy who sponsored you, Johnny Vegas, sponsored by Johnny Vegas. It's telling you, 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 you really do need to not have as many late nights, Tim. They're catching up with you. You know, very, very uh, puffy around the eyes. Not a good picture to stop you on. But yeah, even, <laughs> promise you, even in my comment sections, I've been told how poor your golf game is. And as you know, I, in even my amateurish way, um, in limited golf knowledge from limited golf play, but some golf play and lessons, was able to give some critique of your playing. I don't think anyone impressed. Nobody wants to see this. <laughs> and you start trying to change your natural swing, your athletic ability, and, you know, to try to do it like a tour pro player. And, you know, when you're 65, your body just doesn't bend or do what um, some people can do, even older people. Our bodies are different. So I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to play golf my way. <laughs> now, I do understand the constructive criticism about the putting and looking at the ball and swinging slower. And these are all absolute warranted criticisms. <laughs> and I'm going to continue making some. I told you he's the worst putter. <laughs> Even I know that. I've played enough golf. Not recently, unfortunately. But I'm sure if I went out on a, um, I used to have a boyfriend. We used to play a lot. You know, my friends just. I'm in grad school all the time, always in school now. We're doing this stuff. I don't know. My friends have kids now, and one that I used to golf with, they go out of town every weekend, and it's a different world. I can't afford golf anyway. <laughs> it's a dream. Oh, my dog's asleep. My dog hurt her paw today somehow. So we had to – that's another reason I'm I'm running a little bit late is I had to do a little bit of nursing and make sure she didn't get anything funny in the poll. It looks like just a friction blister, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how she does. Some videos on golfing, uh, and I will add, I will apply uh, some of these constructive criticisms because you're absolutely right. Well, do I like to hear about it? No, because you know why? When a golfer plays golf <laughs> and it's not going his way, we all know, if you don't know, they cuss, they throw their clubs, they get mad, they swear, they can't stand it, and then they want to come back the next day and play. <laughs> there I don't know. You're talking about professionals? Because they might be getting a bit more heated because they've got money on the line. <laughs> I mean, big money. I mean, huge, huge, huge money. These professional, I mean, these professional golfers, I mean, talk about a sport you make money in. Professional golf. They have longevity of careers. Fault of it. <laughs> Tim, Tim, the... the you're revealing a lot about your personality. Um, 
when you say about the difficulty in taking criticism. But I'm glad that you do have the ability to take uh, constructive criticism. So, and uh, that at least shows some development of character. Not much, but some. Nope. <laughs> take it away, Tip. There was a commercial during the Super Bowl. <clears throat> I got it. <laughs> oh, damn. And it was a BMW commercial. And this guy comes off the course with his three buddies and he's just cussing and screaming, you know, on TV. So he wasn't saying bad words, but he was, you know, complaining. He pulled his sweater off and he threw his clubs in the back of the, the car. And you know, I hate this game, this stupid game. Who, who thought of this game? Blah, blah, blah. And then he gets in his car and it's a BMW commercial. And he puts a seatbelt on. It's one of those SUVs. And then his buddy that let him go on and on and on, just driving, looks over at him. He says, same time tomorrow? He goes, yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> yesterday, I let my emotions between the heat, my back, the frustration, my mind was thinking about these tutorials. Uh, Jay is doing a great job of videoing. And <laughs> I hope you paid for Jay's dinner last night for the hours of potential heat stroke you could have occurred to him <laughs> while filming you so you can look at your game that you probably thought was fantastic. And everyone has just come out here. Because they got a proper filming of your game because Jay was revealing it all. And and your putting was terrible. Painful to watch, actually. And I absolutely abused this guy. Yes, you did. I'm like, stand over here. Video over here. Drive the card faster. Drive the card slower. Yeah. Move over this side of the ball. Not funny. <clears throat> I was very, uh, and Miss T, I'll tell you. <clears throat> she says, you're so uh, sometimes, like, demanding. Yeah. And uh, I apologize. Um, okay, carry on. Yes, you are those things. Demanding is not the words that I used. I said you were controlling and bossy. And there were other words that I was thinking about using, like overbearing. <laughs> but I hadn't said overbearing in the course of my um, commentary. So it didn't seem to fit the thumbnail. But overbearing would be very much what you were. You're very overbearing. Demanding, I think, is true. But demanding is can also have other things about perfectionism in there. And I don't know if that's the case with you. I think yours is more control, bully, overbearing. That's just my opinion from what I observed yesterday. Apologize to him already, you know, a couple of times. And, hey, we went to dinner last night. They love me. And, and I love them. These are two great people who are camped out right next to me. Today, this morning, we're going to breakfast. It's a nice guy. My tree. And then John and I. <laughs> Jay and I. <clears throat> are going to go shoot our GUNs. Here in Arizona, it's very mm. GUN friendly. And we have GUNs. So we're going outside. We're all wondering if you have a license to carry a uh, multi-state. <laughs> Both of you. Because <laughs> different states have different laws. And uh, <laughs> Tim, I think just maybe not even talking about that. Okay. I mean, I live in a state with concealed we weapons license. I told my friend the other day that I wanted to get to the gun range. I'm not like I've ever been pro gun, like super like that. But, you know, I've thought about moving you know, more out into the country and stuff. And I'm probably going to have to have some type of home protection uh, other than the, the pit bull that I have. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's more, you know, for that. But, you know, I just, there's questions because I understand you're not a very proficient gun owner, that you don't do very well with securing your gun and following gun regulations, GUN regulations. Is that what the, well, I'm just commentating. I don't know anything about this. <laughs> to a range. <clears throat> God. We're going outside. And it's not even a range. It's just open area that the, uh, the store where he got some ammo at said. That cough is quite persistent. You need to see somebody about the cough. Because it's been chronic now. And that's not good. Just saying. You can go. And people go. And so we're going to go. I will not be videoing it. It will uh, be very um, anti on Google. Uh, so they don't like that kind of stuff. 
And maybe some of you watching are anti-GUNs, but I'm an owner <clears throat> and I've been uh, wanting to <clears throat> run a few, uh, a little bit of ammo through mine to make sure they're still operative. Of course they are. And to have a little fun. It's kind of a I just want responsible individuals who know how to manage their uh, armory correctly. <laughs> that's all I want. I think anybody who's responsible, that's all they would want too. I think that's the biggest you know, the reason why people talk so strongly about not wanting any is because that seems like the best solution if you don't have people who can seemingly respect what a great deal of them do. And so you 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 actually are probably putting now, I know you all, very mixed exposed to expose you today. So we already know, gosh, Tim, uh, definitely cowboy, hey? But guy mm. thing, and so... Uh, J, J, J John, J slash John, he, um, he loves it too. And I'm going to talk about something that he shared with me. And he, he said, you know, he really didn't even mind, but I'm going to make a story up about a guy and you can fill in the blanks. Now I'm going to switch gears on you here. And folks, we talked. I just heard that Tim said that guns were a guy thing. That's not the case in the United States, Tim. Or even in other parts of the world. There's a girl on YouTube from Austria, <laughs> I think, who has a gun. I mean, I'm just saying it's not. YouTube just doesn't want to see you doing the action. That's what they don't want to see. It doesn't make you seem any tougher or harder, Tim. <laughs> Sorry, my, it's only got my own. Let's talk about the I'm frailty of life. And... I'm hungry. You know, live your life today is what I promote and, you know, be positive because nobody's promised tomorrow. Get your social security as early as you can. Oh, you know, I've got a box of positivity codes too. And I certainly want people to take care of their mental health. But there is also a toxicity to a, this positivity culture that to say that every day you should just wake up happy and do this and do that is very much devaluing other people's emotions and feelings. So, for example, if you just think that, that it's toxic positivity. So the message, unfortunately, and I know a lot of people resonate because maybe they are going through hard times in their lives. And to see somebody who's so positive like Tim, but he rages too. So some of these chats the other day weren't so positive. I didn't find the morning chat that he did when he was talking about the haters and the this and the CNN and the Fox News, nothing positive from that. That was very negative. Most of, so if he thought that was positivity and that was the first thing he came out with in the morning, he's mistaken because it didn't sound that way. So there is a toxicity to always saying to be positive or to see the bright side because that just really undervalues how people can feel when they're having to face things. So it's not always good, you know, to tell people to cheer up or it will get better. You don't know that. But the one thing that Tim does seem to think he knows is that you're not going to be here tomorrow. So he lives by that sort of mantra that probably extends from when he was younger, that I just do what I want. I don't care. That's why I don't have a house. That's why I don't have any savings. That's why I don't have any retirement because I live for today. I live for today because you don't know what's going to be there tomorrow. And he's very much a live for today person. Tim is not a planner. And because of that, he's had a lot of probably missteps and mishaps in life. And so I don't find his message very beneficial to people at the end of the day not from a mental health perspective. It actually can be very damaging for people, um, especially if you don't understand that people have major depression disorders. So just telling people to be positive, and it really can even, and this is probably why it resonates with his audience who are maybe even a little older than Tim, is because in this age group, one, social isolation, they feel alone. And secondly, that they can have uh, often because of the isolation and other health concerns, chronic illnesses, just a lot going on, that they can start to have 
depression and not been somebody who, you know, came with like major depressive disorder, which is very different from having depression that has come up almost situationally. And so it still needs to be obviously treated and addressed. And the person who's experienced it has feelings that need to be valued. And so just, I think they appreciate hearing this, like Tim coming out like blah, 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 you know, but to think that's the way that people should be on a daily basis, I think is inherently wrong. As much as we think as a culture, that's how we should all be. I think obviously being aggressive to other people because you're stressed in a public place is not good, but always have, and you know, you should be kind and courteous to others out in public because you're, you are interfacing with other individuals and you need to respect their space and what they're going about in with in the day too. Anyway, I don't want to make that too long winded, but I just wanted to say that there is some toxicity with constant positivity. Just, you know, something to reflect on. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I got long winded. Just there. live I your life though. Just just live your life because it is true. The story I'm going to tell you is exactly like I've said. You wake up one day and you feel something and you're like, oh, what is this? And or what is this? And you go down to the doctor, and they go, Oh, you got it. And it's third stage, and you got six months. Not much we can do. It's spread out. And you get hit like that with a ton of bricks over your head, and you're saying, Wow, life is over for me. But then you go into stage three for which cancer. I mean, stage three is not necessary, not all stage fours. I mean, stage four is generally that's not the best. I mean, in stage three is kind of on the fence. It's, we've always said in oncology, that's good. I worked in cancer oncology, Tim. So you better watch your references in this area. Uh, but we had a saying, if we wanted to have any, it'd be one or four. One, you got a great chance of survival. Four, you kind of know. Two and three, you just don't. So I'm curious how the story's going to go. Just saying, okay, just from my experience of having worked in oncology for years. But what do I know? Just some idiot on the internet. The mode that probably almost everyone does, and that's why, can you fix it? They get the chemo. They get the radiation. They get all this stuff. Who is it? Mm -hmm. uh, and for <laughs> a lot of cases, it shows improvement. Uh, hey, I see this time he kind of pulled himself away and just turned off the message. Either it was just a scam call and, and it wasn't Johnny Vegas or he listened to me last time where I said, just turn your focus on. If you're going to be filming, just film. Don't be ready to take a phone call. I put my phone on focus and so nothing disturbs me and pops up. Not even like a message from like some store trying to tell me I have 30% off coupon for something. They, it affects them. They lose their hair. They get all the side effects from it and they get hope. And six months later, after all this treatment and losing weight and the sickness and everything, you lose your taste. Uh, you lose weight because you can't eat. You don't want to eat. You lose your taste. You lose your moisture in your mouth. You All these things I heard that what, what happens, you lose 50 pounds. And, uh, you know, six months later, you they say, hey, you know, you're better. And then six months after that, there it is again. It's back. And then this time, you know, a lot of people, it takes them out of here. They're gone. And what, what kind of life do they have? They tried to live. And... <laughs> They did everything they could, and their whole... Well, I don't know. If they followed your advice, Tim, they would never have seen a doctor ahead of that, and they never would have had a preventative scan. So maybe had this person been receiving regular health care and seeing their doctors once a year and following with the uh, preventative screenings that are recommended, that they would have caught that cancer <laughs> before it was stage three. You would not be shocked, at, or you would be shocked at how many people discover they have stage four lung cancer uh, because of car accidents. <laughs> so they're doing like a chest X-ray and then they'll see the problems with the lungs. You can be, uh, there is one, they're starting to realize, because we have it for breast cancer, we have it for um, prostate, 
we have it with obviously colon. There are different cancers that are covered through the insurance here in the United States and are part of a preventative care plan. And there are ages which we recommend. With colon, we're recommending at 45 now. With uh, breast cancer for ladies, I had a doctor who wanted me starting in like my late 30s. I mean, he was like, you need to go as early as possible. So I started really early on that. Um, with, uh, obviously we get, ladies get the other ones for, you know, cervical cancers and we get, um, all sorts of other, you know, pap smears and <laughs> different types of tests, which are all things that we do preventatively and uh, to find out. And it could be that, yes, there's unfortunately something, but if we're catching it early enough, hopefully we can treat it to some extent of having a successful course for the patient. <laughs> but Tim was the other day here telling people never to see a doctor. So for Tim's world, this could be the potential. All right, Tim. Why are you so dreary? It's morning chat. <laughs> Into their life was nothing but <clears throat> chemo, radiation, prayers, hopes and wishes, and to no avail. And they go through all that loss of hair, loss of weight, sickness, mm. look, looking nothing like they normally look like. And it's just a sad, sad, awful, awful thing that some, the way some people leave this world through cancer mm. and other people, you know, yeah, you get hit by a bus uh, or, you know, have a heart attack and, you know, you're out of here in five minutes, you know, things happen. <laughs> However, it happens when people get to be in their sixties, <clears throat> 40, actually that heart attack thing comes on with a lot of people. Oh, for goodness. <laughs> I'm enjoying this and not because these are the two areas in medicine that I specialized in uh, primarily and gerontology too and hospice end of life hospice okay inpatient terminal agitation some of the worst cases of end of life that people don't realize happen at end of life okay <laughs> now I got this person trying to talk about you know, giving zero hope to a stage three cancer patient out here. Gosh, this this is this is supposed to cheer your audience up. This is not very positive. This is miserable. <laughs> and then with the heart disease, there are things that you can do to modify risk factors, Tim. You don't modify your risk factors because you're out there doing cowboy steaks and crap like that. I hate to say it. it aren't beneficial for somebody your age to eat that much red meat. Sorry. Sorry, Junebug. My dog doesn't like it when I get feisty at you, Tim. And I feel feisty today. People. <laughs> well, what I want to try and tell you is that most people, they hear you talk or they hear other people talk about these kinds of things. And they say, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's not me. Um, I'm 60. I'm working till I'm 70. I'm working till I'm 67. Uh, I don't think about that. I'm not negative. I'm not going to worry about that. I've got to put this money away. I got to get that extra. Because these people also probably have a care provider who they see regularly. Maybe they aren't as neglectful of their health like you have been. Not everybody didn't have health insurance and ignored doctors. I work in healthcare. And I see patients from a variety and walks of life. And I see for those who probably followed up with their doctors and did things and had, had minimized their risk factors and are doing much better. And I've seen people who just go all hog out wild. And their risk factors are far more. <laughs> You forgot to mention about the deaths from alcoholism, Tim, because there's some of the worst ones that cirrhosis of the liver, bad. $700. I got to, you know, whatever. And they think that it can't happen to them. And what this individual told me is in hindsight, after beating it in five years now of remission, okay, that the only regret they have is they didn't stop working sooner. They didn't start living life sooner because... <laughs> That period of time they lost in their life. Are you sure? Because maybe they're working, paid for that health insurance for their, you know, treatment. 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure the age of this person. Tim doesn't give a lot of details. So I don't know the authenticity of his story. And having worked in the medical field, anytime people give out these medical stories, it, my little ears prick up because I want to hear the authenticity. So stage three, five years in remission, and he just wishes he wasn't working. Tim, I promise you, when you cranked out six videos the other day and I reacted to them, it felt like you were working pretty hard, mate. You're just, you are not a very <laughs> mm, wise person sometimes. Continue. And their life could be very probably uh, could be a lot less than people that never experience uh, a health issue. And so you live with that every day that it can come back. You have this fear. And so now they're living their life. They can all they can. And, and they're doing great. And that's, that's fantastic. But when I heard the story and then there was a part of the story where when he was going through what he was going through, his father uh, was becoming very old. He was in his nineties, early nineties. And he had to be put in a home because he couldn't take care of him because of what he was going through, his cancer. And then after he beat it, you know, got better, after went through his treatments, his father didn't want to be in one of those homes. So he brought his father home. And then his father went back and they went into like several uh, retirement homes. Finally, the father came home <clears throat> and passed away in his home uh, with his son, you know, I mean, in his son's care. And some people, a lot of people, most people, I guess I should say, have a dumb statement, you know, really care for their parents and help them. And when they get much older, <clears throat> you know, care for them instead of a retirement home, if they require that. And that's very admirable. I mean, I know some people require medical care that their family cannot perform because they've had strokes and stuff or their family does not find easy, or maybe they just don't have the means. There's many a reason why people in assisted living Obviously, we rather people be at home. That's the preference even for the medical field, to be with their family. But we want to also make sure that they're being able to be cared for. But, yeah, we want people to be home. Absolutely. Oh, Tim, that, you need uh, to have that Somebody coffee. else that I talk about on my channel that's a very uh, good person sat with his mother in the same hospital room for two months, in the same room with another bed until she passed away. And I mean, that's how much he loved his mother. And there's there's just so much that people want to do for their loved ones uh, that they're close to. And then when life takes a turn on them, and both of these individuals I'm talking about have, now have... I'm just thinking about that poor staff. No, They probably like the sun in the end. You get to know these people once they start to literally live in the patient room. <laughs> and it happens. And most of us are very understanding in healthcare, you know. <laughs> but that's the sort of things that you deal with in, in my line of work, you know. So, but Tim has no idea because he's never really worked that hard before. Oh, my goodness. And it, to me, it just feels like a natural part of the day to go in and, 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 and work 12 hours and take care of patients and deal with complex issues. Just part of the day. He would have no idea have or did have and they're on they're in re they're in rehabilitation they're in uh, re remission currently have issues with the big c with a heart disease with a back issue with serious shoulder issues with things that well if you know anything about chemo it can be very hard on the heart you have to do a lot of ekg studies on patients and make sure that their hearts are not getting affected from the chemotherapy because we understand that. So just, you know, clarifying there. But, okay, <laughs> Tim in the medical. No, he's just trying to hit everything on me. Don't seem to be getting any better. He's speaking Spanish. And there's today. nobody in the medical wow. field that seems to have answers other than here, take this pill or go to this rehab or, you know, take this treatment. That's <laughs> all we can do. And so. Oh, uh, so I can't. I can't with this person. So what are you trying to say about the medical profession that controlled a stage three cancer? We don't know where. Help the gentleman get into remission. Supposedly a Tim story, which means that he'd be five years out from his cancer diagnosis uh, or from his 
cancer being say that he was free and clear of the cancer. And then it would be five years after that. That's remission. You hit that five year, you've gone, you know, you, you're pretty much in the clear. In the remission period, you know, that's kind of, you know, we really know you're in remission. But it takes like five years to get there. <laughs> you know, it's not like, you know, they scan you. You don't have any cancer. Oh, you're in remission. No, you got to be like checked out regularly for five years. Then we'll say you're in remission. <laughs> it's, it takes a long time. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I, I Carry on. <laughs> These people... Look at oh. life differently than people. Oh, yeah. Are Sorry about the doctors. Yeah, because we just give pills and this and that. Well, I think you need to see a doctor for your cough, but you're too stubborn. So it's just going to persist. You know, you just hate the medical profession. You know, somebody, because I think it's because these people know more than you and you don't like that. It makes you feel not inadequate in some way. And this rhetoric about the pills and this, I just, I find it when you've worked with patients to hear this from somebody, it's just, it's so just, it's not a helpful message to him. This is not positive. This is not positive at all. I've never been ill or even are up in their years. They're 60 years old. They never had an issue. They've never had cancer or heart disease or anything. And you talk about, live your life and get your social security or just quit working that prison job and start living your life. And then the people that are facing these issues, see how important and less important going to some job. You know, I'm not saying you quit just because you don't, if you don't have any money. I'm sorry. I worked with a, uh, a nurse who in order to maintain her health insurance, cause she was still fairly young, worked the entire time she fought her breast cancer uh, went into remission, is still working. I've known a lot of people with cancer who work. And they have to work. They don't have a choice. They, they're not mooching off the $58,000 EIDL loan and $1,700 a month in your ex-spousal SS benefits. <laughs> I mean, and getting the coffees, of course, and the YouTube money. I mean, I'm going to get too long. Honey, let me let you go. You got to do what you got to do. You got to live. No, I, I understand this. But wrap it up, Tim. Even if <clears throat> you are still working, your attitude about life, when you have your weekends off, when you see your family, <laughs> when you meet strangers, you have to look at life like, look, if you were passing away soon or I'm passing away soon, I know I got oh, something. How am I? What's my attitude now? Am I just going to be this mean person or do you finally get it and start acting like a person of love, a person of kindness, a person yeah. that treats others the way they want to be treated? Because you have to live with the fact that you may not be in the world much longer. And when you understand that, that even if you live and die without. I don't know if this is still a good message, Tim. Uh, we all understand that that the human, you know, who we are as a person, at some point there is going to be a time when we are going to be closer to a time we understand we may not have longer to live. Obviously. But I'd rather live my days fully than, than this in some way. Because you don't seem like you're a very happy person. I think what's happening is you kind of are reaching into a sunset of your life as you perceive it, though I would still say at 65, you know, Brad Pitt not much younger than you, sweetheart. And he's trying to get married and shacked up and with another kid, probably. Shit, Robert De Niro, pardon my friends, just had another kid and Al Pacino. So I don't know. I think you're just, I think this is you, Tim. I think you're looking back at your life and realizing you've reached 65 and you're meeting all these other 65-year-olds in retirement or people like Jay, now his name is Jay, that have succeeded a lot more in life. And I think you're you're just kind of dawning into that realization of what you have not achieved. And so you want to bring, you know, everybody else into the, your, your chasm of misery. <laughs> Getting cancer <laughs> or miserable disease today. or anything. I don't find this you, very positive. Uh, or here, but this long.
in life in the whole scheme of time. And after you're gone, most people don't ever remember you, you know, except your loved ones, uh, your friends and stuff like that. Every, life just keeps going. I mean, look at Jimmy Buffett. He died of skin cancer. <laughs> I'm out in the sun all the time. People go to the pool. I know. People like me that worship the tanning bed. I know. I'm concerned about that thing on your nose, actually. I'm just going to say. And Jimmy Buffett dying of skin cancer? Why am I not shocked or surprised? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be morbid, but I'm not shocked or surprised with the amount of time that man spent out in the sun and stuff. And he certainly was not somebody built for the sun like that. No, everybody gets it. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> He's just like hitting all my points. I worked as a plastic surgeon dealing with skin cancers. Gosh, Tim, got to keep away from the medical stuff, sweetheart. I've had a lot of years of experience in working. Yeah, that's where I was when I started my, when I was still a nursing student. Anyway, carry on, Tim. Um, eating certain foods that they're feeding us that are caught, that are known to be cancer causing. Well, that cowboy we just steak throw caution the to the room. wind. Hey, you know, whatever. I don't care about that. I don't have it now. And then when you get it, you know, things change. And when something happens to one of your family members, things change. All of a sudden you go from being uh, like, wow, I need to change my attitude. I was uh, not the kindest person. Look at all these things that I was doing. You know, uh, you just wanting to go somewhere. You want to go to heaven. So you want to change your, your, your ways. You start praying to God. I don't care what people say. There's no atheist in a foxhole. Let those bullets come start flying over your head. Let that doctor tell you you got six months to live and you'll be changing your mind. So why am I talking about all this? Because the story was shared with me and I quit drinking and I tried to start doing things differently. I started trying to speak with a cleaner mouth. I'm trying to you know, read my Bible more. I'm trying to be kind to other people. And what's you don't have a Bible, you have a devotional book. You do need to see whatever that thing is on your nose is concerning me. You need to have that checked out. Um, just kind of saying it's, I don't know if I saw that on you before, if that's a freckle, but just cause you play out in the sun a lot and you probably don't use sunscreen. So I definitely would be wanting to get skin checks. Okay. Carry on King of positivity. You're miserable. What's happening is it, it's reciprocating. I had last night when we came back from dinner and we got off the bus, we have a little bus that takes us over here to the uh, riverside. <laughs> and, uh, there was a Lexus that pulled in here. I said, who's that next to my camper? <clears throat> this guy gets out. Hey, Sarasota Tim, another subscriber. Hey, we haven't watched you every day. Mm. And he gets out and this very attractive lady that's with him. Uh, she goes, oh, I hear you're famous. And I'm like, I don't know about that. No, you're and not. then, um, oh, God. he says, my daughter, you know, oh, God, uh, watches you too. And oh. I think he's trying to do a video call with her to have us there together. Oh, and, God. you know, uh, and I got an email saying mm. that, uh, my dad's going to be in town and there's a spot open on his boat. You know, if you'd like to go, no, and yeah, I remember getting will. it. And I've had so many people reach out to me knowing where I'm at. I, I broadcast where I'm at and stuff. And they watch this channel. I don't even know these people. No, you don't. And they come to me just to say hello and meet me and encourage me. And no, you shouldn't be having, this is where it's problematic, Tim. Okay. This is where you as a creator need to understand, even though you have friendships you know i love a lot of my community obviously and my subs and the people who support me through my live streams and some i text with and they feel like friends but you you know this you just have to be cautious you 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 can cross a line so you know you're not famous <laughs> you're youtube infamous that's a difference but yeah he really does enjoy the relationship he gets with his subscribers too. Okay. To keep doing what I'm doing and to disregard these other things that are out there. And I do, I do not listen, watch or care about those negative things. But my, my concern is these people that are acting like that and doing those things, what would happen to them? Do, do they actually change if they woke up one day and they go to the doctor and they feel something and the doctor says, you got it. And it's third stage and you're going to be out of here in six months. Do they regret what they're doing, uh, if they're drinking, drugging, uh, trolling, whatever, do they, do they change? Or they trolling. I knew he, he wants to tell reaction channels, probably me specifically this week, because I've made so many reactions to him. Hi, right, Tim. You, you, you reveal the true meaning of the chat somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I have no problem. I, I go see my doctors and uh, 
I have a good relationship. They just say, so what? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I doubt it. <clears throat> I doubt it. I mean, so why do you need to wait? Don't wait until something health wise, uh, until your husband leaves you, your wife leaves you, your boyfriend, your girlfriend break up with you. You get addicted too much to this drinking, this drug. Uh, you contract, you keep eating these things that you know <clears throat> are bad for your health that are making you overweight. Uh, why do you keep doing these things? Stop now. Go ahead and look in the mirror and say, this is not good for me. This way of thinking, this way of eating, these people that I'm associating with, this, uh, this thing that I'm doing is not doing anything, anything to progress my life. Who is this message for? <laughs> Who is this message for? I think this is a message for Tim from Tim. Because I'm sure the nice man Jay and stuff, I'm sure they don't wake up with any of these thoughts. Those people are fairly content in their life, Tim. Even trolls like me. <laughs> I study psychiatry and, and humans. You are my subject matter, speculationly speaking. <laughs> life That's made up to be a happy, healthy, no, it's fun happy. life. Because you only get one. There's one term. <laughs> There is no unhappy. renewing this contract. So what are you going to do with your life? Are you going to share it with somebody and live it to the fullest? Are you going to esteem this individual? Are you going to treat people that you meet every day uh, like you want to be treated? Are you going to do something? Well, does that mean you want people to boss you around and tell you what to do and get your name wrong and then not help somebody take out the trash from your RV or, you know, laugh at somebody when they injure themselves? Because that's, 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 that's how we would be treating you, Tim. Because that's how you treat others. You were a nasty piece of work yesterday on that golf course with that gentleman, Jay. I'm just telling you. You were overbearing. You were bossy and controlling. And I cannot validate any of your emotions on that otherwise. And so if that's how you want, you know, you have that attitude... No, you just want other people to treat you well. That's it. You treat other people terribly. So, again, you preaching out here, Tim. Your practice is very different. And we've seen it. And we see how you interact with people. It's not pretty. And I'm surprised these subscribers, you know, or interested in meeting and they talk about this positive message. Just because they put the word positive doesn't mean the message is such. For somebody, are you going to change your life? Are you going to repent, which means turn and live? What You have a creator, you know. You were created. You didn't just pop up here. Oh, Tim. This is a godly Cashing it with uh, Christ. universe. This was created by a god. And there is a control. And there's also evil and demonic. And I'm talking about not just people that are in YouTube business. I'm talking about doctors, lawyers, these business people, these, these stores, these things that have nothing but are evil. You... Wow, Tim, you're a very angry and upset person. <laughs> you really have it for doctors and attorneys. <laughs> Jeez. I got like five friends who are attorneys. <laughs> you better watch your mouth on the golf course. Just saying, you might find there's a lot of attorneys out there. In their mind of collecting money, usurping power, politicians. <laughs> the world is eat up. The man who also talks about the retail, he's got like matching golf outfits from Walmart. He bought four of them the other day. <laughs> so <laughs> whatever, Tim. Up with this kind of stuff. <laughs> so if the shoe fits, get yourself another one the same size. But start to do what you can do to be a better person, you know, and quit complaining about this group of people, these politicians, this YouTuber, uh, this race of people or whatever. Look at yourself in the mirror. What are you doing? Are you eating right? Are you not drugging and drinking and smoking? Are you treating people with respect? You know, come out of your basement, push the keyboard away, say enough is enough. I don't even know this person because it's the karma, man, karma. I'm afraid to do stuff like that. I swear to you, I am afraid. When I grew up as a believer in God, I got out of whoopings a lot. Spanking you. We didn't get spanked. We got whoopings. And I prayed because if I was a bad boy when I was young, I got whoopings. 
um, not every day. And I never heard the same thing twice because I learned. But my mom could tell my dad, I'm going to tell your dad when he gets home, and he's going to whoop you. And she would, and he'd be happy to do it. He'd just drop his whatever he did, whatever he was carrying when he came home, and he'd tear my butt up. No wonder you all the way again, with him. Never for the same thing twice, and not that many times. But they believed in you. Yeah, gonna, and that's respect. not the best way to, to handle children, to be honest. That's kind of, you know, that we have shown that you – Obviously, it's difficult to reason with children, but there is a way to be stern with children that does not involve whoopings, <laughs> okay? I promise you, I have years working with children, and if you are correctly stern, you can, you can, you know, you have to be the adult and you have to do what you say. That's where parents probably have, you know, you can't mix the messages with the kids, pretty much. This whooping stuff, though? Tim, come on. Says more about how you grew up and and why you did things at such a young age that got you out of the home. That's all I'm saying. Respectful. And so mm. what's the point of this? The point is, I don't know. You got to know right from wrong. And I'm afraid oh, this is what my point was. I'm afraid of doing something, stealing. And other things because no one's around and doesn't see me because he sees me. Didn't you? Well, he saw you then fraudulently take that EIDL loan. You talked about the loan. You know you really didn't have a business and yet you took that money. What other things? I feel like this is covering up your character flaws, Tim. Me. And he can believe me. That karma can come back. He can get you found out. He can, he can make somebody That's find out about you. Absolutely. Or he can absolutely withhold the blessings that he had for you. And the same thing is opposite. If you do the right thing and in your heart, he knows you're being Christ-like, godly-like, respectful, Aww. then all this wonderful stuff comes in your life. Now, I haven't been living the life. I've been living that. I lived that other life. I did. I wasn't as bad as some, but I'm not going to sit here and say I was some angel. And now I've been doing my very best every day. And I try to share it on this YouTube to those that might be struggling with the same things. Do what I do. I think you actually may need to get some proper assistance with this recovery. I mean, I'm glad if you're staying away from the alcohol, but I wouldn't recommend, you know, drinking non-alcoholic beer if you're recovering from anything. It's a slippery slope. So I think that you're trying, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you're feeling the effects of having, you know, stop the sauce. I'm not sure. I'm glad that probably age may be caught up with you on it. Uh, I'm glad that you're meeting people. I'm glad this is keeping you busy. Um, but maybe you still want to get some support. Just saying. Because it works. Live a good life and stay healthy. Be kind to others. And look at this love I'm getting. Look at this love. I never imagined in my life. I'm living my best life right now. Yes, you at are. At the end of it, you know, the final chapters. I'm 65. Yes, you are, because you spelt out exactly how, through the panini, if for a better term, you managed to cash in on so much money. I had not really been for that terrible event where we lost so many people. Your life would probably be looking a lot different, Tim. And I don't know if you'd have a YouTube channel or not. Maybe. But you wouldn't be in this RV, and you wouldn't be in that Tundra truck. Well, because from what I, or at least the RAV4 and the Wolf Pup uh, initially, and then you were up, able to upgrade. Maybe you had extra money from that one viral YouTube video. But you clearly told, and we have video evidence, that you took out $58,000 and an EIDL loan. And that is the reason why you have what you have. Because you didn't save for anything. You didn't accumulate anything. You didn't have a plan. And now you're just trying to bring people into this message with you and you're not being very honest about how you arrived in the situation. Yeah, you're living your best life because you got a fraudulently attained loan from the US government during a time when we were in national crisis. And people like me were putting our lives on the lines trying to care for people. You don't walk around with getting a $58,000 EIDL loan.
So you should be ashamed of yourself. Five. I don't have as much runway in front of me as I got behind God me now. I forgive you for that. And I'm enjoying it, though. I'm enjoying it to the fullest. And these people that keep coming <laughs> into my life just keep reinforcing how I would never, ever want to abuse anybody, even though I abused uh, J. John. Yes, you did. Yesterday. You did. My own. <laughs> and you've abused Tammy in the past, too. And other people whose properties you've stayed on. So it's not just Jay. Just saying. <clears throat> Mad about golf. But he still loves me. And they, we went to dinner last night. We're going to go shoot our GUNs. And we're going to have... Did, he, did you pay for dinner? Were you so embarrassed by your behavior, Tim? Did you offer to pay for that man's dinner last night? I would put a bet you didn't. In fact, I wish I could come up with a good thing like Darling had about, uh, in fact, if you let me know, Tim, <laughs> about it, maybe one day I'll donate to your coffee club. <laughs> that will be my, that one day I'll come out with that one. Darling has her bet already with you. And I wonder if you've taken her up on her challenge yet. But I would bet, Vegas bet, you did not offer that man dinner after your appalling behavior with him yesterday. I'm, I'm, he, bless Jay for still speaking with you. And the fact you still can't get this man's name correct. I guess you just haven't embright, in, in, you know, ingrained and you used it so many times you can't get rid of it now. I, and I understand that can happen. But uh, I hope you offered to pay for that man and his wife dinner. But we know you're probably too cheap for that. <laughs> Breakfast this morning. We're going to share coffee. And he loves all my sayings. He watches all my videos. Hmm. And he went through a lot. Oh, no. He Don't try to pretend that you're so some type of empath, Tim. Because you just, yesterday, were just awful to this person. You are just, you're worse than a prosperity preacher on uh, that terrible channel. I can't think of the channel. <laughs> Planting seeds and stuff. Oh, here he goes. Teary-eyed Tim. He went through a lot. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. But we became kind of close, and he shared this story with me. That's why I said, I want to make a video about it. I said, no. I'm not going to name you specifically, because I don't care. Well, that was nice. <clears throat> And when we talked about his dad, he 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 watered up, man. I don't know why you're crying, Tim, because you just described your your dad as whooping you. So I don't think I don't know if you're crying because you didn't have that relationship with your father that he described or is about to. Because your dad supposedly just whooped you when you were bad. That doesn't sound like much of a... That sounds like a classic Southern upbringing, I'm afraid, folks. I, I'll let you know. My grandma from the South, and I knew what a switch was. Hang on. Listen. I don't care who you are, what kind of life you're living. If you're not being good and, or you're trying to be as good as you can, you get sad. You have concerns. You don't want to die. You don't want to be hurt. And yet, some people do that and do it to others without any remorse whatsoever. And it's just a sad, sad thing that anybody can wake up in the morning and think about who they can hurt when <laughs> you hear stories of people that almost died or they lost someone and just <laughs> kills them because they were so close to them. Uh, Tim, I've worked in hospice, okay? So if anyone's had more of, uh, contact with people at end of life, it's probably me in this situation. <laughs> and I still wake up and I'm still wanting to warn people about people who use their charisma to mislead and potentially uh, gain uh, favor from vulnerable populations like seniors. And so that's why I comment on you. And those same individuals could be somebody that you want to tear down. And for what? You don't even know them. For pure jealousy or something? 
you get off on that. Don't be like, don't be like that. Don't listen to that. Don't watch that. You crush it. Don't forget you got those three dots that you can hit because Tim told you all about it. Because you're not allowed to have any thoughts of your own. Just follow Tim, your leader. <laughs> you know, I says I'm part of the hate crew. That's okay. I, I, I see how you try to manipulate people. Did you buy John, uh, Jay dinner? You do good. You do good to others. And you watch your life mm. just take off like a rocket ship. You need to put yourself on. Uh, you need to watch how you were yesterday at that golf game. Um, I, but the problem is, is you may not even, you're so sort of self-centered, I believe, Tim, that I think that you would still be looking at how you were playing the game and not even how you were treating Jay or thinking about any health consequences he could have from sitting out that long time in the heat, just sitting there. I don't think you think about that. Jay sounds like he's a very nice man. Bless your heart, Jay. I think... Tim doesn't deserve you. Because karma, God, everything, whatever you want to believe in, it reciprocates. It comes back to the universe. Just to give you a heads up, as part of the Episcopal teaching, we don't speak about karma. Karma is not part of Christian beliefs. So if you are such a great Christian, Tim, I would suggest that you stop using the word karma because that's to not part of the Christian belief. We don't talk about karma. Okay? <laughs> That's what one of my pastors clearly explained to me. It's not part of what we, we, we don't believe in karma. So I don't know why you're talking about karma. That's not part of Christian beliefs. We don't believe in karma. We say do unto others as you would do upon yourself. But karma is not part of the Christian faith. So... Maybe you should really take time to study your Bible and attend church and have conversations with your pastor. We'll pay you back what you put into it. And if you're doing bad things and it's not, you think it's not working, it's not coming back on you, you're getting away with it, you're fooling yourself because it's coming. It's coming. And it's going to come in the worst way. It's saving it up. It's going to make it a bad one. And what are you going to do? Send followers to threaten women? on YouTube about doxing them and stuff. Cause that's what one of your subscribers probably did to me. Well, subscriber probably that's what I'm speculating, but whoever it was, that's what somebody who watches your content did in my comment section, Tim. So all this positivity and all this talk that you think is, is spreading the word of love. You actually are much more toxic than that. You try to have your followers, because I don't ask anyone to go play in your poop, really. <laughs> in fact, I don't want people watching you. That's why I'm here, because I'd rather them watch me and take the view from you, because I find you problematic. In the same way as when you do good and you love others and you you know do the right thing, then Just I'm, living the, I'm living beyond, beyond anything I could ever imagine. Yes. And I would have never had yeah. this kind of life if it wasn't for my great community that I have. Right, right, exactly. And that you sold them a lie about how you've obtained uh, certain material possessions. So I think you need to honestly come out here and keep telling them, I got this stuff through the IDL loan. I did not plan for my retirement. I lived off my ex-wife's social security and I make a lot of money from YouTube and my buy me a coffees. I think you just need to be more honest being very serious in this one but he's being very frustrating all ninety-eight thousand six hundred and twelve of you beautiful souls out there <laughs> that watch my channel and comment every day and encourage me and support me and do all these wonderful things and support the people that i bring into the picture on this camera that that uh are just like you that i haven't met yet and people who come into my life and you're so kind and nice all of you wonderful beautiful souls out there they are probably very nice are people. everything that i just talked about God bless you all. Except for the one. And continue to take today and make it the best day of your life because nobody's promised tomorrow. And every day, make your bed and crush it. Oh, goodness. This, did he happen to listen? Hey, good morning, everybody. Sarasota Sorry, TM. let me not restart him again. <laughs> did he? Did he?
Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry for that little interruption there. <laughs> I disappeared. I hit the wrong button. Anyway, let me just play out my brand. Gosh, I got another video. I'm sorry. I got a little bit serious there. Tim had a lot of things that I did not appreciate him saying. And he's, he, I really don't. I really don't. And, you know, the fact that he couldn't get his friend's name right and just, he's, he really doesn't like the reaction to this. Anyway, <laughs> if you did like my content, please subscribe. Obviously, I'm a troll who wakes up with uh, bad thoughts in my head every day. So that's just who I am. So sorry about that, guys. I did want to thank all these wonderful people. I have new new members to the Good Life team and to the Best Vibes team. So thank you, everybody, who has recently become a member. And thank you guys for all of your support. It is very, very appreciated. And you know it is. All right. Thank you, guys. Take care. I, I, should I say a positive message? Uh, just make sure that you're staying hydrated and wash your hands. That's, that's my positive message. Keep safe. Keep healthy. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.